Pond extension 6391. An oil change on that Ford Focus. Okay. But uh, also um, the transmission. Like, yeah, we can't get that done today. We have to make a point with the transmission. Yeah, because it, it, it's slipping out of gear. It's, it gets stuck in first gear. I, I redline at 7,000 RPM. It goes 30 miles an hour. I, I know all about the defect of the transmission. I wish I would have known that when I bought the car, but it's just, it's really bad. It's really dangerous. But for right now, I at least need to get the oil change, and then we'll find out about the transmission, I guess. Well, when we get done, we can set the appointment for you. Okay, for sure, yeah. Okay, I, I mean, I... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to need a, a, a TCM reflashed and new clutch and everything, and... Then it's probably going to break again because they're defective. So, I'm sure, you guys get a lot of complaints about them, huh? Well, believe it or not, we get complaints, but we've never changed one. Really? A transmission? No. We've done oh. modules. We've done updates. Yeah. But the transmission themselves never gone out on the cars. Uh -huh. Because I, I've actually read stories online of like people like going up, maybe not this dealer, but other ones that. They end up getting the whole transmission ripped out and replaced under warranty, and then they drive off the lot, and they're like, it's still fucking Oh, up no, us. well, that's, that's a characteristic of the transmission. Well. That takeoff. Well, yeah, there's a whole, well, we but, got a whole, I well, got a whole thing from Ford on that. Oh, well, yeah, but, but not staying stuck in first gear no, at no, no. 7,000 RPM. <laughs> Um, well, I, I came here before once, but they couldn't do the oil change, so this is actually my first time actually oh, okay. like getting no, actual no. service. So I'm just waiting for the dealership right now to do an oil change on the car. While I was over here at the shopping center, noticed this uh, RV over here parked by Kmart, and I wanted to do a quick video about it. Um, since I've been doing a lot of videos about RVs lately. And also last night, there was another RV. I was kind of driving around looking for a place to park and take a nap at. And I wasn't really sure where to park at and found an RV. And I was just like, okay, this looks like a good enough spot. Seems like a safe enough place. You know, because usually all these people that are living in RVs that they already have the good spots kind of scoped out and whatnot. And they're already at them. So I just figured I'd go pull up behind this RV and kind of dream a little bit, you know, kind Kind of hope and dream. You guys have no idea how badly I was wishing that the key to that RV was on my key ring so that I could just like walk up to it after I parked right behind it. And just walk right up to it and open the door and just spread out on the bed and just, you know, get a good night's sleep instead of sleeping all crammed and uncomfortable and with no privacy and constant noises and lights and all that bullshit. I mean, I'd be able to be so much more productive if I could just get a good night's sleep without, like, all that shit. <laughs> Pretty much, basically. You guys really, a lot of people don't understand, and that's why I got making so many videos about this lately, too. I'm just trying to get this out there, just trying to vent and get the shit off my chest, and hopefully maybe get some help to get this RV, yes. I'm sure if I continue and she over here helps keep me motivated and happy and positive, that I will end up getting the RV on my own regardless of what happens, but it's just if I, you know, if I'm trying to do it on my own, it's just gonna take a lot longer and that's just gonna be more months and months and months of sleeping like shit and with no privacy and just losing my fucking mind. Like, try to put yourself in my shoes for a minute, like, for those of you who don't understand or like to criticize and judge me, it's hard <laughs> to, to put it lightly. I mean, it like when you can't even get a good night's sleep and when you're always like sleepy and sore all the time and then you're trying to, to, to you know, get out on the road and get shit done, focus and, you know, pay attention to all the traffic around you all day and, you know, all the bullshit and, try, you know, it's just, it, it's a lot. It, it, takes, it takes a huge toll on a, on a human being, basically. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, like, unless you're actually living the situation, it, you're just not going to understand. I mean, I, I know I keep saying that, but it's really true. Like, you really do truly have to live the situation to know what I'm talking about. You know, she knows what I'm talking about. She's, she's kind of living this with me. We just need a home. Really fucking bad. A home. That's just, it's so fundamental. 
I, 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 like, I don't even know how else to put it. It's so fundamental to a person's ability to function and focus and rest and, and be a productive member of society. It just, uh, it all starts with being able to, to sleep and wake up well rested, fully charged and ready to go instead of waking up for like the fifth time to whatever noises are going on around you. Waking up with your eyelids still heavy and not really wanting to get up, but then trying to tell yourself like, come on, it's like time to get up and go to work. So then I just try to go and push myself and drive as much as I can until I get sleepy again and back to sleeping like shit for a little bit. Yeah, whatever rest I can and then it's back on the road. So that's why I push it so hard for, for help to do this because like I said, I, I could do it on my own. I, I could, I, you know, as long as I keep motivated and keep doing what I'm doing, I, I will get it on my own, but it's just, I really prefer not to go more months and months and months like this, sleeping like shit. This isn't life. It's not like, like, like it's not healthy to be living like this and try, trying to work like this. A lot of you guys that wake up in, from a bed every morning in your own room, in your own quiet, peaceful room, getting ready to go to work, you guys have no idea how good you have it. I mean, I had that for a little while back when I had my apartment back in uh, Pomona, my mom's old apartment after she passed away, so I had that for almost two years to myself. That was my first time really in my life experiencing that, like really like, like just having like my own space that was like truly, well not, that's the thing, it wasn't truly mine, but it was close enough to mine because I was paying the rent on it. But yeah, the, the, the RV is like kind of like, like the next step up because then that really truly will be mine. And I, you know, I won't have to worry about any landlords getting pissed off if I decide that to paint something a different color or drill a hole in the wall or you know all that kind of stuff you know and there's gonna be drilling because I'm gonna be installing solar panels and wiring and all that kind of stuff and I'm gonna wanna like do some painting change the carpeting or whatever and I'm not gonna have a landlord to answer to so that's what's really exciting about the RV life and why I want to do this so bad. It'll finally give me so much freedom that to just do what I want and live my life and, and not be a slave of a landlord and paying all, all this extortion money basically every month just for the privilege of sleeping in borrowed property and then the minute that I lose that income it's back to the streets with nothing to show for it as I was touching on in my previous video about renting being a scam. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. So anyway, I just thought I'd leave you guys with that. I don't want to make this video too long. So um, leave your comments down below. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And yeah, that's it.